If you guys are out in the uh, South Dakota area near Sturgis, a little town called Spearfish, you want something different? Come and check out this art gallery. It's out of this world. Definitely come check this place out. We'll put the links below. We're here in Spearfish, South Dakota. What you doing here, Dick? We have a little gallery out here called the Thermosphere Gallery, named after myself, Thermos Spheres. What my main concept is, is that I imagine I'm in the sphere and I'm looking north, south, east, west, up and down inside the sphere, but I actually do it all on the outside. Like an explanation of being inside the sphere, half of the scene of a room is on the inside of the sphere and then the other half of the same room is on the outside. How did you get into it? I was trying to figure out how to take one and two point perspective and continue with that system. Take three, four, five, and I ended up with six point perspective. So I did this as a drawing and as a subject matter in when I was going to school. Somebody just suggested in one of my drawings, it was like a fisheye lens picture. Yeah, yeah. They said, man, that really looks like a ball, doesn't it? I thought, oh, I wonder if this would fit on the ball. This is the first one, but it's a complete room. The floor is here, yeah, ceiling yeah. here, and north, east, And you made south. that on an old ball, And right? it's just a kid's ball. Yeah, I'm about to say, it looks like a soccer ball. <laughs> yeah, it That's, was just uh, a... 1968, 1969, Wayne. But I was still an oil painter at that time, and I had to wait forever for the paint to dry. How many no. years have you been creating these? 52 years. Oh, wow. So you didn't just start doing that. No, this is not just yesterday's stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you the only one that makes, what, is this called sphere art? Dick Turnus is the only person in the world who paints in six point perspective on a sphere. People played off of it for years. Sure. Uh, you know, I kind of know where they saw my work. Most of them that do it. It's not the only person who ever never has. He'll, he'll tell you how to do it and teach sure. you how to do it. There was one guy in Paris that actually did a six-point perspective sphere, big one. The same year I did my first one, he did one and then he quit. He went back to printmaking. Later I talked to him about it and he said, well, I'm a printmaker and I didn't know what to do with the idea. He took a lot of the perspective concepts back to his flat surface and did some really nice like fisheye. What do you make the spheres out of? The spheres I buy is a polyethylene plastic light fish. Actually hanging with a light bulb inside. How long does it take you to do something like this? That one, probably four months. Just to put the lines of the geometry on there. It yeah, took yeah. Me a month and a half oh, to yeah. get all of that detail in. Can you like sum up for us, like the layman person, how you use the mathematics with the creation? The geometry that's found in these things, a lot of it comes out of the platonic solid. And the simplest one is this one that has there are six vertices to it. Mm -hmm. And that's a good example of what, when I start off on the sphere, I just find six equal distant points on the sphere, which is the vertices of an octahedron. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I apply those and then all of my lines project to those points. It turns into allowing me to do realism or makeup world. Right. A lot of these other shapes like the cube. Mm -hmm. And then the sixness is the center of the face. Later, I got just into the pure geometry, like this piece right here. If you look really close at that, there's a complicated little substructure going on behind the waves. And it's like pentagons within pentagons that end up making those spirals. The depth of it is pretty intriguing. It's fun for me to start with a, a real geometry system and then see where it takes me with realism. So do you do it from memory or from images? Actually, I have a patent on it. This is what I've helped me with some of the realism. Sometimes when I can actually be in the building, I'll just actually do the whole painting. Like in Paris, I, a lot of times I'll take this, what's called the total photograph. What I do is I build a mount that looks just like this, 12 pentagons, and I mount it to the tripod. And then I go into a particular building, usually that I like. I move my camera though from face to face and take a separate picture. When I get those back where that image is, I cut it there. And then I know a template is going to be that size and they're all exactly the same. And no one had ever done it before. Yeah. Now the computers play with this right. a lot. Some of them are more into the geometry, like this guy up here. 
Then a lot of them are made up worlds with the gargoyles all sitting inside. This one is an imaginary world too, but a repeated pattern gets into the math side of it. Because it's always fun to help people with three-dimensional geometries without sure. them knowing they're learning something wow. new. A little kid taught me how to do that with his smartphone. He was standing in front of my spheres. I said, are you doing a video? And he says, no, no, I'm doing a panoramic. Yes. He says, you want to see what it looks like? And he showed me one of these. We've got a ton of guys now. Those are cool too. Yeah, they really turned out quite fun. So do you have a favorite? I suppose this is one of my favorites just because it shows what it can do in the real world. And that's the northern Paris, Saint Denis. A lot of different directions I like to go. And if I right. pick my favorite, I need one of all of yeah, them. Yeah, so, you yeah. can have a favorite in every category. What's the main thing you want to let people know about your art? To make people more aware of the sphere and the globe, the universe and the earth we live on, because yeah. it's all spherical too. Yes. And many of the same design problems happen on the earth that happen when I work on my spheres. I know that when I change something on this side, it actually changes something on the other side. Right. Okay. And that's one lesson we really haven't learned very much of on the yeah. earth that you affect something over here mm -hmm. and it's going to affect the other side also. We really appreciate you showing us around your gallery today. You oh, know? I'm glad you came to check it out.